with you guys right now i'm just doing tedious unnecessary work i just took off my n93 mask because y'all cannot breathe for nothing i'm still over here like <sighs> luckily we don't have any more patients on the schedule ours is the middle column so there's like nobody else but um hygiene has patients so right now like i told y'all y'all never want to go home from work make sure you're always busy and finding something to do so right now I'm just doing these knobs. I'm finna show y'all because 
y'all it was bogus i had to order new knobs because i'm like nobody else wanted to and everybody was just gonna keep walking around the office ripping the fucking knobs off and it was looking bogus so i'll show y'all okay so this is how they were looking before as y'all can see look at this and a lot of times the assistants are reaching to grab stuff real fast and they be breaking these like they be ripping these off and they're like plastic or so close so i got these and these are like i mean come on you can't break these off that's why i said we don't need handles we need knobs because the way we and they're easy to clean too so right now i'm just going through put these everywhere taking off all of the old ones Hey you guys hope you guys are liking the video so far so i think this is a good time to kind of do like a voiceover um so right now i'm just pouring impressions for all the assistants that have never poured impressions before or have poured impressions you already know Ugh, it is so irritating it can become very tedious it can become very frustrating um it's all about pretty much just getting the right mixture of like the base for the most part um how i always do it is when i'm first pouring up the model when you first pour it into the actual impression, you want to make sure it's a little bit runny. That way it's easier for you to make sure that there's no bubbles. When you get ready to make the base, you want to make the cement a little bit thicker so that the base is stronger. And then once you actually set your model up, you don't have your model like the, um, I'm trying to think of what it's called. The powder mix, you don't have it running off, which is pretty much the cement. You don't have it running the stone. That's what it's called. So you won't have the stone like running off of the impression. Okay, so now that I've pretty much got the running part over, I made sure I went and pretty much got all the bubbles out. If you guys kind of see me sliding the spatula in the impression, I was getting the bubbles out. Now I made my base a little bit thicker. You can kind of see by the consistency, like it pretty much drops off the spatula. That's how thick I usually like my base. Because even if you were to flip the impression upside down, the base is still sturdy. You can tell that it's not as runny as the first mixture that I put in. And as you see, as I'm kind of, you know, making sure all the bubbles are out, you're not really seeing it run off the edge like you did when I first did it and poured it up. See, it's a lot thicker. Also, when you guys are packing on the stone for the base, make sure you guys don't get it interlocked with the tray. Because a lot of times we make the mistake or sometimes the base is too runny that it kind of goes into the tray part. And if it sticks to the tray, you guys, you guys are going to have a hard time pulling that impression out. So what I do is just try to keep it on top of the alginate or whatever material that you use to actually take the impression. No, Never really go beyond the tray because... You trying to pull it out or either break it or it could it could mess up the model and it's just not going to come out right. And you would hate for the patient to have left already and then you have to call them back to take a new impression. Also, if you guys have kind of noticed that um, this base is pretty thin. Um, and a lot of times when you pour up models, when you're sending them out to labs, you want to make sure that base is really thick. And like and what I mean by thick is like thick as in like inches, like it has a good thickness to it. The reason why I'm making this base so thin is because we're making in office whitening trays. And if you've ever made whitening trays, um, you have to use a suck down machine and a suck down machine only works the best when the base is skinny. If you try to use the suck down machine and the base is really thick, you're going to have uh, either bubbles in your tray or it's not going to adhere to all of the teeth correctly and so that's why the base is so thin with this because they're only going to be in office whitening trays so just a quick tip um, anytime you are cleaning up stone um, please do not put it down the sink because stone, as everyone knows, it turns into stone, like it turns hard. And so if you flush it, well, if you rinse it down the sink, it hardens in the drains and it messes the drains up. So it's always best to kind of dump it in the garbage 
And then when you guys are cleaning your bowls, please make sure that you clean them thoroughly. When we actually go to grab new bowls, we shouldn't see any extra residue. And then these are the impressions that I took from earlier. This is alginate. I'm going to go ahead and clean those out. And then I'll show you guys how the clean bowl should look at the end. I've came behind so many other assistants prior to me and not saying that I always know what I'm doing or I'm always perfect, but I've made the mistake too. Sometimes we'll clean the bowls and there's still some alginate left in there. We'll clean the bowls, there's still stone left in there. So just make sure they're as clean as possible. <laughs>